or score. Yeah, yeah. individual scores. <clears throat> This one you've got over there cap. Yes, I know. And that one's over there cap. Mm -hmm. And we were going to cap everybody. And okay. so those are part of why okay. it came out different. I think what we'll do, I mean, we already agreed not to go over anybody's cap. So okay. I think once we were changing that, we could probably, be, people get an idea, you know, just approve it with you doing the numbers later. I okay. I just need guidance on how we're doing yes. that because I did well, not know how to do it. I was not to put anybody over there cap. Any once you, yeah. once, you, once you cap them, mm -hmm. there's enough money. Okay. To, I just need to know like the difference on the three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, I, we may even be on the air. Um, I'm Karen Hiller, I'm the chair. This is the Economic and Community Development Committee of the City Council of Topeka, our May 26th meeting. We have an all points out for Brendan Jensen, that's why we're waiting five minutes, hoping he will show up. But um, out, of, out of respect for your presence, we will, uh, uh, Councilman Shum, this is Jonathan Shum from District 4. Councilman Shum and I will do our best to move the meeting forward. We may have to, we, hopefully Brendan is on his way and we will probably have to back up and refresh him when, uh, when he gets here. This is, this is really a three person discussion. So having said that, are you comfortable proceeding? I am. Okay. Um, Thank you all for coming today. Thank you, Corey Wright and Michelle 
uh, Vega Ritana for getting our paperwork ready for us. And we have minutes being taken here, and Nikki Lee from Finance is here if we need her. Um, the first item on our agenda is to approve the minutes of our May 14 meeting. They've been out for comment um, by email, so I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Seconded. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Oh, same sign, minutes are approved. Um, we've got some disclaimers. I will wait, and we'll wait till Brendan gets here for those, I think. Um, we'll, we'll make sure, please help me make sure we back up to those before we do any voting. Um, funding recommendation vote. We had a preliminary allocation set last time for what we called option 2A. Um, had a chance to look at that. We did have a, a staff recommendation to make um, a, a change to that. And Corey, I will, we actually had some decisions we needed to make within that and also we've got a staff recommendation for a change. So Corey, if you wanna talk about the change first. Um, so uh, staff would like to um, fund the contracted service that uh, did not score um, above the 60% um, due to the fact that it's a contracted service. We feel it's essential to the city and um, for our department's purposes. If you want, do, I need to, do you want me to go through each of the line items here? Yes. Okay, we'll do. Um, mm. it's, yeah. I suppose by reading through it, it'll be real obvious who it is, won't yeah. it? Yeah, mm -hmm. so okay. I don't know if you want it to, if you want, I can go or either way. Can you kind of skip through it with skipping the identifying uh, items? Well, the first point was that um, since it is a contracted agency, um, these are uh, items that we consider that the city would be responsible for with or without the agency, so we, we felt it duly important. Um, the next one is um, our um, target areas would focus around um, some effort with this agency and so uh, we feel that in order to uh, do a good job in those target areas through our department we needed uh, that agency to be uh, funded um, it's really hard to do this without okay. involving I, I everything go much further. okay okay so the the um, options that you had for us um, why don't you go through the four options that are on that list, please? Sure. So for emergency aid, we had uh, some. Well, no, no, just, oh, we'll pardon just, me. We'll just talk about the contracted services at this point. Oh, we'll, we'll do. That. Okay. Let me get on the right page here. Uh, contracted services, the first option was to fund the agency below 60% and then put them on probation. Um, the second option was to review services of the agency not funded and develop an RFP and put that out to bid. The third option was to reallocate the remainder of funds to other agencies and the fourth option was returning the money to the general fund. We also have a, a corresponding issue that we can address with that group in the, if that funding were held at the level that it was last year, there would be some money left over that we could either return or allocate, and there's, there's capacity within the request to allocate it amongst the other agencies, even if we reserve money, whether it's probation or an RFP. Correct. Um, so we can look at that as well. Uh, only you here, it leaves not a whole lot of conversation, but uh, some thoughts, conversation about that? I'm not sure that I'm comfortable taking it, being under 60% and funding it according to the 2015 allocation. I think that if we do look at funding options, perhaps they should be reduced. Here we go. Here we go. Your thoughts? Brandon Jensen has arrived, so we'll yeah. pause just for a second. And All 
Brendan, we have approved the minutes. If, if we can speed you into the meeting okay. here. Yes. Um, and we have uh, we skipped the disclaimers for the moment. We'll get back to that. Okay. And we are talking about that preliminary allocation item 4A. And in particular, we're talking about the contracted services um, and the issue of the four options. Okay. Um, which are on that second sheet that you have. Mm -hmm two elements of that issue really one is what do we want to do about the one agency that didn't qualify mm -hmm. uh, Corey has read through did you have a chance to read in the email the this out uh, this attachment um, no I guess I have okay um, there are some rationale for a staff recommendation that rather than cut the funding that the agency be put on probation under the supervision of the department with mm. quarterly um, meetings. Other options would be to review those services and do an RFP, make sure the services are covered by someone. Um, uh, do we know are there other agencies that have the ability to provide the same service? Uh, I don't know that we've asked staff to review that. Once the services were itemized, it, it might be possible to do those to we would need to find out I mean in okay. the process in my opinion of either a probation or a cutting off of the funds and rebidding it we mm -hmm. need to go back and and really itemize exactly what services sure. we saw as the contracted services identify whether there was um, anyone else that could provide that service mm -hmm. also identify whether anybody else was helping to fund it and engage them in the conversation as well um, that sounds like that would take quite a lot of time. Um, I'm okay with probation if you think that's the path of least resistance, frankly. I mean, I mean that's going to prove to us once and for all, really, are they doing what they're supposed to be doing. And as you walked in, Jonathan was saying he wasn't too sure about this probation idea. Okay. So. I'm, not, I'm not sure about probation with full funding. That's my concern. Mm. Because probation with full funding mm -hmm. doesn't seem severe enough for them failing to meet the 60% mark that we're putting on the other agencies. And I can understand that. Um, though, if we put them on probation and only give them chunks of money at a time, then if indeed they're just bad grant writers and actually capable of doing the work, that would sort of flesh out whether or not they're actually producing what they're supposed to be, as opposed to if they're really not producing anything, then um, subsequent payments would reflect that. We probably need to spend some time setting it up that way if that was what mm -hmm. you thought. In a way, by having the process this early in the year, mm -hmm. um, there would be time, whether it was probationary or mm -hmm. whether to be in keeping with what we've done with the rest of the funding, we, um, it, it, it wasn't funded. There is time mm -hmm. to get that list of services in order and, and engage um, regarding the services needed. That agency could arguably be able to bid on it, certainly. Well, if I Just thinking it out loud. If I remember correctly, we used percentages from how the other agencies scored in order to determine the amounts of the 2016 allocations that we were looking at. Correct. I'm not sure from looking at the numbers that this agency reflects that scoring in the proposed amounts of options 2B and 2C. Do they? But if I may, sure. um, they are below 60%, so they didn't get any increase with that score. So okay. they um, received their 2015 allocation requested, or the allocation they got in 2015. Okay. I don't recall what the 2C was. I mean, we didn't go with it, but it, there is an increase in that one, so okay. uh -huh. confusing. Thank you. I mean, we've pretty much settled down to 2A. Uh -huh. which was the scaled um, increases based on their scoring. I think um, we're actually on 2B because we're looking at funding below 60% for contracted services only. 
Because under 2A, there's no allocation for that agency under contracted services. Mm -hmm. That's true. We just had the money left over, though. Yeah. We didn't allocate it to anybody else, so okay. the money was still there. Okay. So that's the way 2A worked. So we're looking at an amended 2A at this point? Or we? It would be. Okay. Mm -hmm. 2B. In effect, it would be 2B. Okay. Yes. However, the numbers all work. We would just need to clarify in our action what our intention was. Well, I would suppose that, that given the timeline, we need to figure out if we're going to rebid it, if we're going to develop a probationary solution and what that would be, or if we're going to um, look for an alternative agency. Because my understanding is there is no other agency that does, that can handle this clump of work, if you will, so we'd have to essentially break it out and, and part it out and then bid each part. Is that correct? Correct. So, and, and that would take a considerable amount of time and staff effort, I would assume. And item four would not, on my list of, for justification, um, would not be able to be divvied out because that's coming from another funding source, but okay. wouldn't fully fund that service in our community. So I don't know how that would look. <clears throat> so given that, I would suggest that we discuss how we could do some sort of probationary solution so that it encompasses your concerns, which I agree with you completely. I mean, if, if, they, did, if they did not do so well on the application process, and there's obviously something wrong. It's either they're not good at applications and grants and things, which is not necessarily a good thing, or um, they're indeed not doing the work and couldn't produce the outputs or something along those lines. So. How could we structure a solution in such a way that we ensure that the work gets done and the quality work gets done or they don't receive all of the money? And to what extent do we have the power to do that? We have 100% of the power to yeah. do that. Well, we're, I mean, but setting up a new probationary mm -hmm. precedent, really, um, I think we're kind of in new territory. Have we done a probationary period in previous years? A, I don't think that we have. I don't recall that we have. But B, we are creating a new system mm -hmm. as well. And so we're wanting to make sure we um, are faithful to the, the framework that, that that was intended, certainly. Mm -hmm. And maybe we should start by outlining why we're even considering doing this. And just like you said, one of them, this agency is the one that does this in the community. And so if we don't allow them to do the work that they're supposed to do, it doesn't get done. Well, and that's a good question because looking over the proposal, we're not 100% of their budget, not even close. That's correct. So we the are. question is yeah. whether they could continue doing the same work without these funds from the city. Any nonprofit will tell you no. I understand that. So, um, but in a very serious matter, mm -hmm. that's an option on the table is zero dollars in funding. Mm -hmm. This particular one was scrambled enough about what the tasks were that we were funding mm -hmm. that I think no matter what we do, it's critical that we back all the way up and list mm -hmm. the tasks. <clears throat> I do think that that could be done within a time frame of um, getting that process going in June with a commitment to having it either closed or at least out for bid by the end of July um, because it is essential that we uh -huh. sort it out and, and get, it, get it settled. Um, so I mean, having, having walked out of the last meeting knowing we needed to address this yeah. one, I think we've all spent some time sort of looking at that, and um, I think that's got to happen. So just probation based on the application at hand that was not adequate to get mm -hmm. to qualify for funding 
Well, we'd have to have we'd have to have milestones and measurables in order for probation to be successful in any regard. So, I, absolutely, you're correct. We'd have to we'd have to know what we're measuring against in order to determine. Which gets back to that that yeah. list of outcomes of what it is that we're funding. Mm -hmm. I, it's unavoidable that we, in my yeah. view, that we have to do that. It's just under what context? I would be interested in hearing both of your thoughts on possibly returning them to the 2014 allocation of funding and probation. And that would be in the larger book here. If I and just throw that out there as an idea for further input from both of you. And I think that's a good idea. However, we're we're sort of penalizing them, but I think the reason I like the probationary stuff is because we're we're working them through what went wrong. Why why is your reporting not good? What are the outcomes? Why, I mean. The, the reason that it wasn't any good was because they didn't document properly or there, were, there was some reason in there. And so if we build the probationary thing correctly, it fixes those. And I don't know that the 2014, while it does fund them to some degree, you're right, I don't think that solves the underlying problem of what went wrong with their application process this year. And so I wonder if next year we just have the same problem. Because I think you're right. Something has got to change in the agency to solve this reporting and application issue. And I don't know that kicking them down a peg would solve that. It might. I don't well, know. When one of our options is zero, yes, agreed. funding them at over 75% yeah. seems to me less harsh. That's true. Than That's it true. certainly could be, especially since for the emergency aid, mm -hmm. We're holding two at this point. My understanding is that 60% cutoff. Mm -hmm. For me, um, making sure we get that we've identified clearly what services are needed and what outcomes, mm -hmm. how, how we measure those, and so on, is more important than yeah. uh, than a penalty, if you will. I suspect, actually, though, uh, um, because some services have have really changed dramatically over the last. 10 years, let's say, yeah. some, the way that services are delivered in this particular agency. Um, if we itemize the list, it might be that the cost of those services would come out to be less than the 60000 anyway. That's possible. And that's another reason that I think mm -hmm. for us to really, for us and for the agency to know exactly what it is, if we both need to retool mm -hmm. um, and we both know exactly what it is and why it was important and, and how we measure it. Um, well, and, and then we look at what that would cost. We leave the money there if we, we don't have to spend it all. I mean, yeah. that's a difference between a, a probation with the dollars fixed, I suppose, and, um, and re rebidding it. And if we do look at these folks as community partners Absolutely. that we should be working with to solve these problems, then that seems like a much, I don't want to use the, it seems like a much more business savvy way of approaching it. Let's sit down and figure out exactly how we work together, you know, going forward. Cause you're right. I mean, when was the last time we evaluated this stuff? It's probably been years and years. And then try to figure out where we need to be and how to get there. And we were looking at this new process to do exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. So it's it's uncomfortable, but it's exactly what we yeah. wanted was to have it was to have a process that required a clarification of what the outputs and the out, what the outcomes were, why we were doing this, what yeah. the activities were, how you measured that. And so it's working. It's just yeah uncomfortable yeah um, and that's the downside of not giving them any money at all is then it's it's kind of like a slap in the face as opposed to you know we're just not going to fund you because we didn't do our paperwork properly let's but if let's we're going to rebid it if we're going to identify the list and this is just yeah. conversation i'm not saying how we have to do it then then they'd still be in, able to bid on it oh, that's arguably. true yes and so given the the mm. opportunity it's just how we have that conversation in mm. what context we would have to me, the conversation has to happen. I agree. Well, and part of it is, you know, if we look at some of these, do we as the city know what we need in, in some of these? Well, it's going to force that clarification. That, and that's the other point is, mm -hmm. are we sure that we're It's a two-way conversation. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So. I think in any of, in, you know, no matter what agency mm -hmm. it would have been. But. So even if we did the probationary thing, that doesn't solve the root cause of the issue, which is what I think we should be doing in almost right. anything in, in city government is let's, how do we fix the root cause? How do we make the process better? And then next year, we won't have this 
uncomfortableness as we try to flesh out what we need done to make our community better. So you'd be in favor of rebidding it? I think so. I, and I think, you know, put in there that we need to clarify what we're doing or what we're asking for first. We, if we agree that we need to do that no matter what, mm -hmm. then if, if I can, without putting a name on it maybe, we've got a, we've got a, a choice. It sounds like we're committed to making sure that these services are delivered. A choice mm -hmm. of um, reserving the money to be negotiated for that agency or cutting it loose and identifying and renegotiating mm -hmm. where it might be that agency that gets all or part of the pieces or yeah. there's an opportunity for others to bid on all or part of the pieces. Right. Absolutely. So, the first thing which, to do that was self-reflection and figure out what we need to do on Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And if that's, that should be agreed no matter what. So the issue is, do we at that point, you know, with any other agency, Deputy Mayor, if I may. Please. So on um, justification item two, that would not be something that we could bid, uh, bid out. Um, neither three and, and four is um, a federal mandate that would be essential for, I, we, we would not be able to bid that out as well because it's a, it's a direct federal grant to them that they need supplemented by other funds. And this amount of money that they're requesting, I just did a little punch, and it's 5% of their total budget, just so you know. We also have a clause in all of our contracts that say, um, if it, something like that. Um, we have the right to see, seize uh, funding for not performing. So just, mm -hmm. just a little information. So. Just to clarify, you said that was 5%? It's about 5%, mm -hmm, according to their application. But on the other hand, this agency, as others, has funding from multiple sources, mm -hmm. and it's sure. not clear from this application where their money is going or where our money is going mm -hmm. at this point. So you're saying that that they are the only ones that can accomplish two, three, and four? Yes. Okay. So really, our only option then is to and part, work with them yeah. to make this work. Yeah, pardon okay. me, and just, just the, because I only say that because unless they close their doors, mm -hmm. then there's an opportunity for someone to take right. over those duties, but we would have to wait till they, in fact, close and their doors before we did that. Is that so. a federal thing or the state, or who, who decides who handles this? The, the fourth item on that mm -hmm. justification is a federal grant that they receive, um, and they use our city funds to supplement I see. that particular program. Part of the challenge with this process for us is that um, they're, the set aside for them in traditionally has not included items number two and three, and it has included other items that aren't, some of them aren't even listed in their grant that obviously somehow has slipped away as unimportant or mm -hmm. whatever and hence the reason to, to, to back up and, and make sure we've got the list clear. Um, again, they have funding from other sources as well and whether those sources are being dedicated to two, three, or four, it's not clear. Huh. I'm not saying it's not important, <laughs> it's just not clear. Well, perhaps we should table deciding what to do with them until we've made our list. Well, what we want to do, we, we need to make that decision. Unless you're not ready to make it today, well, it drive some of the other decisions that we need to make since. I mean, leave the, leave the money okay. as a line item in there and then decide whether or not we, you know, go out for bid again or ask them to redo their application or if we put them in some kind of probationary thing um, I don't. I don't think we have enough information to make that decision today, but we could leave. We could leave the money that's allocated for this particular thing. Well, we need to let the agencies know, <laughs> and we need to let the council know. Okay. We owe them a report. Well. So I mean, don't want to over push, but sure. we don't get to put this off. How long will it take to build the list? <laughs> <laughs> Pardon. How long would it take to build the list? It shouldn't take very long. Okay. Shall we recess until the list is built? 
oh, well, I don't know about doing it right now okay. in the meeting, but <laughs> um, it shouldn't take long. And so if there is a process that we need to go through, mm -hmm. no matter what the terms of are making that list, and, and you might be right, but you know, in, in my thinking yeah. about it after our last meeting, it was okay, how much time would it take to get the list down, to vet it with the agency and others yeah. probably, because we're all interrelated, sure. all the services that are happening here, and then either get it negotiated with, with the agency that's, that's our contracted agency now, or get it out for an RFP so that we made sure that by the end of the summer, which is still plenty of time before people's fiscal years in January, right. it was clear. Well, I mean, this, this agency has been a community partner of ours for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like we at least owe them something so that we can try to work this out and work together better in the future. So what that is, I'm not quite sure, and how it will work, I don't know that either. But um, if, if there's a way that we can come together with them and say, Let, we need to solve this, then I think we should go that route as opposed to you know, just cutting them off and saying, no, try again next year. Well, again, um, I'd be compromise on, mm -hmm. you know, the issue is whether they would still be eligible to bid on the services either way. It would just be whether the money is reserved just for that. But I don't have time for that is what you're telling me. We okay. do have time for that. Okay. Then let's table it until we've figured out what we're doing and then rebid it. And I mean, that well, we just need to decide process today. Right. We don't have to decide what's going to happen. Okay. In, well, you know, so money. We, but well, we, I think we we've need already, to set aside money, yes. and we need to at least generally come up with what we want to do. And I think we've agreed on all that. So we're going to set the money aside. We're going to get our list of things we want them or we want handled, our, our to-do list, and then figure out is this the right agency to do that, and if so, then try to develop a plan to get them where they need to go, and then if not, uh, you know push it back out and have everybody rebid for it, right? My concern is that items two, three, and four, I don't think there's another agency that can before there's January. Not. You're correct. We'd have to, they'd have to basically apply it. We'd if, have if we to, couldn't negotiate it, then they'd have to apply, they'd have to re basically start over, essentially. But, but we don't have another option besides this agency, so just telling yes. them to come and rebid it when they know we've got no other option to do items two, mm -hmm. three, and four, and that's why I advocate for let's do the probationary thing and try to figure out and work work with them. I mean, they are again, they are community partners we've worked with for years and years. So let's try to figure out what went wrong here and, and fix it. Because again, like everyone has said, there's nobody else that can really do this. But what's the process going to be, and can this process be genericized to work with other agencies that we have? issues with in the future or is this a one-off thing that we don't need to worry about the, That's the, other the issue is that it's a contracted service rather than in in the competitive okay uh, is that we need we need to we need to mm -hmm. cover the services that were in that line okay so it, it, the way the way our system is set up it yeah. would not be something we would consider okay um, for the emergency aid or the counseling and preventive bucket they get they're welcome to have whatever consultation mm -hmm. with with Corey and staff at any time mm -hmm. um, have been before this round and, and would remain so. Well, so should we drop the 60% for contracted services then and leave it on the other ones, or is that unfair? I think you don't do that. If you've got a contracted service agency that can't hit the 60, then you've got a problem. But we don't have anyone else that can do the work. I disagree. I mean, there are, there are technicalities um, with the particular grants that have been identified, mm -hmm. or particular programs that have been identified. Would it be possible to put them on probation for the year 2016 while encouraging other agencies to bid for the 2017 handling of the various items two, three, and four? I think if the sense of this group is that you want there to be probation, we just need to give ourselves the time within that to to go to make that list and go through it with them mm -hmm. and decide, A, if the services that they've identified that they feel are what's meeting our need mm -hmm. really are. And if not, we've got a community problem, yeah. problem to figure out. And, and if, if 
give ourselves the time within that, let's say, six-week window or whatever mm -hmm. we choose to to get the list, their list and our list together mm -hmm. and work to reconcile those, figure out whether they're able to deliver um, to our like, satisfaction, yes or no, for I, a probationary like year. Yeah. Um, because they may know things that we don't being in the weeds in the field. Wow. But at the same time, we set up a system yeah. whereby we were going to look generically without getting caught up in relationships, let's say. Yes. Um, um, to, uh, to make sure we, we were looking at services and yeah. outcomes. So. Well, and I think, you know, given that there are nuances where there's, there's money that we are essentially passing through and matching. Um, and that eliminates some of our ability to just cut them off blindly, unfortunately. Well, anybody else could say that. Just saying. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, let's. Um, do we want to step back and do the disclaimers? Um, let's see if we can finish this okay. first since we're this far down. Mm -hmm. um, Corey, did you have some language for this possibility? I got the email from you, and I played oh. with it too in case we changed it a little bit. On which one? Just this, the the language that we would use in our report out regarding a decision for this, because this would have to be footnoted in a um, in the in the sheet. Um, yeah, I have what I emailed. If you do, would you like me to read that? Sure. Okay. Um, we are proposing motion to approve 2B, where the allocations are based on the agency's 2015 allocation. Oh, just, just read the part about this right now. About, I'm sorry, I'm about, not following. About a contracted service agency that okay. did not meet the... Um, no funding for agencies below 60%. Unless they are contracted services, they will have level funding and placed on probation, which consists of quarterly monitoring and reports back to the ECD committee. Um, that's that's yeah. that's what I wanted mm -hmm. you to read. I'm comfortable with that language, except that I think it needs language in there for us to review and have a and have the a satisfactory description of services and outcomes before it would. Brendan, if I could pick up on a thought you had earlier, <laughs> we're talking about a number sixty thousand. Are you comfortable with us releasing a quarter of that for the first quarter and making the second quarter's resources dependent on how they do the ring during the probationary period? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Period? Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, absolutely. I think we should do that. Deputy Mayor? Now, I'm much more worried about getting it set up up front. Okay. Because then they're going to turn in like they usually do based on their actual expenses. And so my, I think our work is now. But to me, that's the most important part. Then they can, they're going to have quarterly monitoring anyway with the with contract language that says we cut it off if it's not working, correct? Correct. So we've got that. The issue is we need to make sure we know, everybody knows what we're funding. So the key is we need to make sure that the major C's we're using to test whether or not it's working are updated. And in, in this case, we've got to have a satisfactory list of services that are agreed have it well what if we say we fund them with, with with those other stipulations but fund them contingent on coming up with that list and it being agreeable to us and them yeah so if it was something like then contingent contingent on a satisfactory list of services outcomes and budget yeah. by September 1 that should be plenty of time, I think. Well, that's enough time that if somehow we don't, we can work on alternatives. Yeah. Okay. So moving forward, the, the phrasing regarding this one would say any affected agency would have level funding and be placed on probation, contingent upon satisfactory list of services, outcomes, and budget by September 1. 
followed by quarterly monitoring and reporting back to the ECD committee. Is that? I think that accomplishes our objectives well. The community is getting taken care of. We're ensuring to our constituents that we're doling out their money appropriately and that we're ensuring that the work is actually getting done. Okay. It gives us some options when we dig into it and sure. get things worked out. All right. And that would leave then, beginning of her, hers was to leave it at the money from the prior year, 2015 allocation. You're still comfortable with that? Go with that. I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I, personally, if we're dealing with 5% of their budgets, I, I still think that the city staff has bent over backwards to try to help them get this right the first time. Mm -hmm. And so I'd be okay with the 2014 allocation personally, but I'm one out of three votes, so. <laughs> I don't know if, back to what I suggested sure. when you said that before, if the contingency of a satisfactory list of services, outcomes, and budget could then include, if it turned out that the satisfactory list said that they only needed 30, you know, whatever, 30% mm -hmm. yeah. of the money they'd asked for, then there would be money left. We'll be the committee. Yeah. Okay. So. I mean, I feel like. The fact that we're going in and reevaluating everything that we're having them do, mm -hmm. I mean, that's almost like a pretty intensive audit. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that is reprimand enough if it is okay. for, you know, you weren't able to do this on your own, even with our assistance. So now we're going to go through and audit what we're having you do to ensure that you should be doing it. And then, you know, that will produce the outcome you suggested. So. And it, it, they may very well, very well be doing everything we want and, and more. I, I don't right. know. You know. I'm optimistic that uh, you know, they're, they're doing what they're supposed to be. They just didn't write the paperwork correctly. But again, the only way so. to really find that out is to look. And we're spending other people's money. Yes. So yeah, it's, for me, I just want to make sure we're, yeah. we're getting what we, what we thought yep. for the community. That's, that's critical. Mm -hmm. With, with the understanding that that re review could involve a, a budget adjustment depending on what comes out of it? I would, but I wouldn't allow for a budget adjustment upward if they say that their cost of services are more than what we're comfortably allocating today. Well, I, it, they, it certainly couldn't go up this year. I mean, yeah. perhaps next year. Uh, and, and the motion will say to leave the money at last year. We could say at no more than. Uh, no more than. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't want to open it up for another organization that scores above 60% to come back in and feel that this organization had an unfair advantage uh -huh. by right. doing a poor job to renegotiate higher. Yeah, I would agree. Gotcha. So have no more than <coughs> level funding yes. placed on probation, contingent upon, followed by. Okay. I think it's time for a joke. <laughs> that would be all right. Anybody have any good jokes? <laughs> Where that leaves us then with the contracted services and with the emergency aid buckets, if you will is unallocated funds. There would be eight, with, with what we just talked about um, for contracted services, there would still be $8,215 uh -huh. available in that bucket. We do have allocations to, per, per the formula, but there is capacity in the requests uh -huh. of the other agencies to go ahead and spread that money, or we can recommend that it be turned back in or used for some other purpose? Um, I mean, just because we have the money doesn't mean we have to spend it. Correct. I think that historically in government that has always been a bad policy. <laughs> so, so you'd be in favor of returning it to the general fund? Well, unless we can come up with an extremely good reason to use it. If we spread it mm -hmm. and 
and you got a handout in the mail that, well, if we spread it, mm -hmm. it's, again, it's $8,215. It would push three of the agencies. If we looked at spreading it proportional to the grants that they have, mm -hmm. um, three of the agencies would cap out at what they requested. Mm -hmm. um, and the adjustments between the other two would be modest and still within what they requested. Mm -hmm. And that's illustrated under option 2C, is that correct? Well, I'm looking at the one we got today. It would be under 2A. It would be similar to, to 2C, but the 2C has them go over, going over their caps it goes over what they asked for. Okay. Uh, we decided not to do that, okay. so it pushes it back a little bit differently right. in order to cap them, the ones that... Didn't we decide that a bunch of these folks had just requested huge amounts of money mm -hmm. because they thought we'd kick it back down a ways? And so, I mean, if, if we're hitting their caps, which were inflated caps... Well, if you look at them, um, it, it's interesting because we can, we can pursue the same thought line uh -huh. um, with the emergency aid ones. We had talked about returning it, but there's room within the request to accommodate. If we look at, at them, really, there is, um, in, in, the, in the contracted services, there is only one agency that asked for substantially more than it had before, and it would not get anywhere near that amount by the formula that we use that builds off of the 2015 allocation. Okay. And then we only pay them for what they actually produce receipts and such for, correct? Correct. Okay. So that just gives them a higher ability to produce receipts, essentially. Well, or to make sure they have enough staff to provide the <laughs> services. Or well, and that's true, but you can always hire more staff to do things. Of course. Well, it's the, it's the pleasure of the committee. Again, we've got two of them mm -hmm. with 2A that are already, that asked for the same amount they had last year and, and are covered. Three that were, that were really pretty close. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, spreading 8,000 out of 300,000 is, relatively Ag speaking, not a lot of money. Agreed. Agreed. So. Well, I mean, either option is not, it's not really going to give me any heartburn. I, you're right, it's, it's a small amount of money. Um, my only concern is that in government, every time we're given money, we try to spend it all. Mm -hmm. And we've done that for decades and decades, and now <laughs> look where we're at. So that doesn't necessarily mean that will happen here or even at a, a city or state level, but and, and partly, I mean, we will, once we finish this allocation process, we will have the opportunity to recommend policy for next year. Mm -hmm. So partly you need to think about whether we're revisiting the decisions that were made before or whether. One thing that would be interesting to know for next year when we look at this process again was how much did they actually spend versus what they asked for on the sheet. Um, we've looked at what we allocated last year and then, you know, what the, the bump is. You mean like what their whole budget was? Well, how much, how much did they produce receipts for that we actually wrote them checks for? 100 percent. Yeah, it's 100. <laughs> that's easy. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. So it doesn't really. I mean, whether they're using all of the money or not, they're using all of using the money. It. Yeah, that's. No, and one of the things that I observed when we were reviewing the applications was that we did not have somehow mm -hmm. a um, a scoring bucket for cost effectiveness now you see where I'm going sure it's not there but it could be next year mm -hmm. in terms of cost of unit of service comparative costs from agency to agency um, just how much we're spending to do yeah. X um, we, we don't have a, a scoring bucket to measure that in but that certainly yeah. could accommodate what you're that's ultimately about. is are we I mean because on some of these services we may not be spending the average per unit of service, and maybe it's because we're not giving as much service as we should be in some cases. Or in some cases, maybe we're spending the equivalent of $3,000 a person for 10 people, yes. and we say we, have to, we should yeah. be looking at whether 
that's the best investment yeah. and maybe yeah. we would decide yes absolutely i'm haunted but by the recovery act where they spent 200 something thousand dollars to create a twenty-five thousand dollar a year job that was only going to last four years mm -hmm. oops <laughs> well let's see if we can move this along well uh, brendan if you're comfortable because i think that eight thousand two hundred fifteen dollars is about what two two percent maybe three percent of the three hundred thousand mm -hmm. so I don't mind returning it to the city budget. I, I think that's a good faith effort on our part and shows that we're being fiscally responsible and, and sticking to the standards. I don't know how many feet of street that would buy. I'm sure that I'll have a constituent It'll email me. It'll fill some potholes. So it would. Yes, it will. And so I, I think that's a good idea on your part, and I don't mind that at all. So I'm hearing a consensus to not reallocate the difference, but instead to return it to the general fund. I, I do think it would be a good indication that we're trying to be prudent. Okay. Um, I'm comfortable with that. We'll plug that in. Um, let's see. Figure again, Corey. Eighty, the the reserve or the unallocated eight thousand two fifteen. Okay. Okay. Then down under emergency aid, the way we left it last time was that we had one agency that did not meet the sixty percent. Um, it left. Uh, with some adjustments, $45,967. Uh -huh. We had considered returning that to the general fund. We had also considered, however, holding it for other, um, for water or sewer assistance, uh -huh. um, reallocating it to other agencies. Um, so we need to, we need to wrap up that one. One option, since we are, we had the, the original vote was to have 25% of the dollars go to emergency aid. If we return it to the general fund, mm -hmm. it doesn't go to emergency aid. Yeah. If it's reprogrammed to the other agencies, which we did not talk about last time, um, if they were funded in full, there would still be $9,698 left over uh -huh. there and would put those dollars into emergency aid. Again, a similar concern there is one of those agencies requested over th looks like three times as much as the 2015 allocation. So that would, in effect, reward their Chutzpah a little bit more than. I really liked your, your rainy day fund idea. I did go back and look at the app on that one. And the app um, basically goes up about $30,000 in how uh, their budget from 2015 to 2016. The difference is, as, as I think it's 30,000, we can look at it um, in additional emergency aid to clients. That's the, mm. that's the difference between the budgets. And so that made a difference to me sure. when I was Well, and so that would take the emergency it. fund idea we had talked about and mm -hmm. put it in the hands of an agency that would actually Correct. employ we, it. Correct, we talked about that. And so, so. We've, got, we've got two sitting right here mm -hmm. that applied and scored well. And so. I mean, the private sector always does many things better than government because they can move faster than we can. So in the event of an emergency, for us to deploy those funds, we'd have to convene, make recommendations. Oh, the council, we held it. Yeah, the council would have to convene, approve it, then we'd have to put together a program, and then so the time it would take to actually get the emergency money in the hands of people that need it right. could be, I mean, even if we did it as fast as humanly possible, it's at least several weeks. Whereas if it's in the hands of an agency with a process that we know works, already in place, already ready to go, then it's just a matter of go call them. 
I had a question on the emergency aid options under option two there, the holding the funds for water, sewer assistance, weatherization. Mm -hmm. Just some clarity on what that would mean. Are we holding the funds for the city to use at their discretion for that? Are we holding the funds for someone to apply for who's having trouble with their water bill? What's I think that I'm the one who raised that, and it's because prior to you two coming on the council, when we raised the water rates last year, when the council raised the water rates, there was concern that maybe there would more, be more people in need of, of assistance in that arena. Um, last year, the, um, they, we, the, the council changed the guidelines somewhat on their franchise fee rebate mm -hmm. fund. Um, and maybe that's why, but it wasn't totally used. Hmm. Uh, but the, of course the rate increases went in this year. Something I observed again, reading back through the apps on the, the two agencies that scored well is that one of them was in particular wanting more money for utility assistance. Mm -hmm. And so if that was our goal, it would be, as Brendan said, parked be placed in, yeah. um, so with that we, intent. Would we have an option of doing both one and two, and just two being the 9,698 amount left over after funding the agencies to a total of, I think, 79,000 between the two? Yes. I'd be. Sure. I think that would be. Yeah, I, I don't see a problem with that at all. So go I mean, ahead that, and that, reprogram into the, the, the agencies that scored well mm -hmm. up to their requests. And then, take and then the turn the rest yeah. back. And just make sure they know that they may not get this again, but mm -hmm. we're essentially parking the money there for this specific purpose because we have it. Not, mm -hmm. it, it may not happen next year if we have more people apply for this. Well, so I just don't want to set a precedent because that. we may not have this flexibility next year. And for mm -hmm. clarification, when we say return the 9698 we mean for water sewer assistance, not to the general fund. Um, I thought you meant... That's, that's why I wanted to clarify. Oh, good point. I wasn't looking at the numbers when you said Sorry. that. I, I don't know that 9,000 will do a lot, but it's something. Yeah. We probably, I mean, if people. It'll help some families. Sure will. Well, water sewer bills especially are not as high as electric and gas bills typically, unless you have a problem. Or a Heartland Park. That was supposed yeah. to be a joke. <laughs> if I may, um, we would be able to handle that internally. If you wanted that specifically for water and sewer, 9,000 wouldn't last very long. So we would be, we could do that if that's an option you wanted to consider. So you could handle it internally, or we could funnel it out through one of the funds that we do, like the franchise fee. Right? Okay. Do you do them directly? I no right. franchise fee is ran through uh, community resource council. Correct, but it's our money that right. we send to them right. to get out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to people. Good. Well, should we just add it to that bucket then? Mm. Well, we could figure that out if we need a little time to. I don't know how that would work without them applying for the funds, but we could. Meet, well, they, they don't apply they don't. for those funds. They just administer the program, and then right. they, they dole out whatever money we make available. Correct? No, I'm talking about the 9698 since mm -hmm. they didn't apply for it. It seems. Well, if we, if, we, if we chose to put it out to anybody who's administering funds for us, what you're saying is, do you usually do any direct utility assistance? We have. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'd rather leave it up to the city to do it directly. Okay. And send this money to another agency that will have to pay well, another employee. But to. that's my point. We don't send money to CRC. They administer the program, and then the city kicks that money out directly. All they do is handle the paperwork. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is all they do is handle the front end of the, uh, the assistance program, and then we send the money out. CRC doesn't actually send the money out for that. I'm not familiar with the franchise fee uh, okay. those program very well, yeah. Okay, so it w we wouldn't be giving them extra money. We would just be putting extra money in the pool that's they then control. Or no, they don't really control it. They just do the paperwork. Yeah, they do the eligibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's just run until it's out of money. Okay. okay.
I'm just not sure we know enough absolutely to to go any further than saying hold the funds for water sewer. I agree. I agree. We but need to make sure. But it would be water and sewer assistance, work. not weatherization, right? Yeah. It would be bills. Yes. Okay. Water and sewer assistance. Okay. Bills much better. Than yeah. Okay. So the consensus then would be to reallocate. To be dispersed at a later date. That gives us. Okay. Okay, I think we are building our motion here. We've taken care of unallocated funds. Anything else, Corey, that we need to decide to build this motion? Mm, not that I can think of, no. Okay. Do we need the disclaimers before the motion? Or we do. Okay. We do. Um, let's back up to item number three with the disclaimers, particularly for you. Yes, indeed. So as a small business owner, I do technology service for a number of entities in the community, and some of them are nonprofits that have applied for funding in this. So um, the United Way is one of them. Community Resource Council is another. Um, I think there's only two that I had on my list. From our discussions about that, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. I want, we wanted to bring it up again. We did discuss these disclaimers in our very first meeting, but it did not get into the minutes, per se, which is okay. <coughs> but getting to the, um, we've since checked with legal. Brendan has mm -hmm. checked, and in the opinion of legal, his involvement is minor enough in terms of his part of his business as well as the part of their business that it would not be um, consequential in making these decisions. We've kind of talked about it mm -hmm. in terms of um, of it not affecting his, his votes and decisions here and um, uh, have agreed to go ahead and go forward yes. with our committee as formed. Jonathan had some involvement with? With KCSL, not specifically with their uh, juvenile intake and assessment, but with the agency itself. Having been an adoptive parent, I've worked with them before, so yeah. Okay. And we've so all worked very a hard. for the record, Kia, this time. We've all worked very hard to make sure that we're making business decisions that are in the best interest of the community with folks' money as opposed to you know, deciding who we like and who we don't. This is all, for lack of a better term, based on numbers and a little else, as fact, uncomfortable we as that working, may be. That staff did the scoring and um, that we were working with formula allocations also factored yeah. into the comfort level with moving mm -hmm. forward. Yeah. We did want to do those disclaimers. I don't have any. <laughs> no, a lot of you. <laughs> Kia. Brendan has a business relationship with two of the applicant agencies. Legal opinion is that the relationship on both ends is small enough that it would not impact, but he wanted to disclose it so everybody knew. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I've had prior uh, family relationships with KCSO and it, so. So I wanted to make sure the air was clear and we were as transparent yep. as, as we could be. With that then, um, Corey, I've been writing some notes too. Um, before we go forward, I'm wondering, and we don't have any legal staff here today, do we? Of all days. <laughs> um, whether we want to simply take 2A and annotate it 
and, and actually vote, vote out 2A as annotated and then and have the detail of what our decision making was in, as our uh, agreed committee report. I don't know if it matters. I think if we just remove 2A and just read it as we just created it, because really it's a modification of all three of the options. <laughs> okay. So. Well, if you want to give it a run, oh. you know, the, the deal is that what we, <laughs> there what it we is. need to do is give something to the council that's simple okay. that we explain because they need to adopt it into their, mm -hmm. um, into the budget eventually. So I wanted to leave something it, as, you know, you and I talked about it and then I tried to work with what you drafted to figure out what how our options would look depending on what we decided and kept getting bogged down to be honest uh, because of some of the choices that we made and I, I wondered if we'd be better off with a I could give it a whirl go ahead but I can't give it a whirl. anything <laughs> all right uh, so it would be a motion to approve uh, where the agencies funded are based on the agency's 2015 allocation. No agency gets more than they requested, with scores of 100 to 90 percent getting a 5 percent increase, 89 to 80 getting a 4 percent increase, 79 to 70 getting a 3 percent increase, 69 to 60 getting a 2 percent increase. No funding for agencies below 60 percent unless they are contracted service. They will have level funding and place on probation contingent on list of services that are satisfactory with outcomes and budget by September 1st. Uh, follow a quarterly monitoring schedule and report back to the ECD committee. And then uh, agencies will, will be funded below the $10,000 threshold. Do you want me to continue with the emergency aid portion of the? Do we need something there. in there to return the 8215 to the general fund? Mm hmm. Yep. We're not done yet. Yep. That's why I thought perhaps just eventually voting in the chart and <laughs> having a report might be less <laughs> onerous. Okay, just added return 8215 to general fund. Well, but we also, last time, in order to make the prevention and counseling funding work, we moved 5,400 over from um, emergency aid to prevention and counseling. And then we also have voted to create this. I was kind of thinking like three different approvals, but. That's why I stopped with the emergency mm -hmm. aid. Like we could approve contracted services, then do the emergency aid and then social service. It might be easier that way. wish I had it all down. It's maybe we've got time to, to frame it out. I'm just thinking about how getting this in a, in a document to send to council and then because the explanation is so long of the things that we did, having that perhaps be our, our approved committee report. Um, it, just, it just worked better than to vote on all of it. But, you guys have some thoughts on it? Can't we just say trust us? We know what we're doing. We can. <laughs> Doesn't sell many tickets. <laughs> uh, I love Jonathan's reaction. Mm -hmm. It is. It is difficult to explain. You're okay, right. What we've got is, if we look at two A, what we just agreed.
was basically, well, with, with contracted services, we basically agreed to the 2B line with a proviso on the 60,000 or on the, on the, on the set aside, correct? Um, basically. 2B they get it. with the proviso and then the return of the 8215 to the general fund correct okay so option 2b with 8215 being returned to the general fund so that would be option with a proviso on the on the one that was yes. under 60 percent correct and the in the 8215 being returned to the general fund okay then on the emergency aid we we basically went with the the 26 16 request line for the two that scored over 60 percent mm -hmm. and of no both did score over 90 percent so that's they uncomfortable did. with that and then the remainder 96 98 is being sent to where or funds are being held for water and sewer systems. Systems. And then in the preventive and counseling run, we starting with option 2b as well then. well we really did 2a correct I'm not seeing it on which one with the prevention and counseling we did straight 2a yes just needs to be footnoted that we we did go ahead in order to keep with the formula and go under 10,000 on a couple of them. correct yeah I think if we approve these three then and then um, I can work with Corey and we can put together a, a single document to give to the council that it as approved with a, a, a short committee report explaining anything that's not covered that you all can can approve you can just check minutes and get it out Correct. all right let's let's um, Approve the pieces. I would entertain a motion for the contracted services line. I would move approval. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And that's with the proviso as discussed and the return to the general fund. Um, emergency aid. 2016 request, remainder. Go for water and sewer assistance. Entertain a motion to approve. Uh, so moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And then the um, prevention and counseling, 2A. Footnote that we did go under on a couple of them. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 done with our allocations Corey and I will work on getting the, the actual report together um, in terms of next steps mm -hmm. we were expecting to get notifications out to agencies how soon Corey tomorrow if we could get, do tomorrow we'll send um, the notifications with uh, your individual scores uh, tomorrow so it'll be the allocation and the scores. The other thing, if people had questions about it, is that um, 
There is an appeal process that's available in the system that you saw. We're not encouraging that, but it's there. It has to be filed immediately. The other thing, though, is people may have some questions or concerns that they would, uh, you know, not appeal, but they'd want to let us know for, cons for our consideration about the al allocation process that we just had or for consideration for next year. Those letters will also encourage an opportunity to send us comments, uh, and we really encourage you to do so. Uh, anything else about the letters, Corey? No. Okay. Next steps as far as where this goes is that we will be forwarding our recommendations to the council for inclusion in the budget. Uh, assuming there are no changes, the allocation should be included when the budget passes. Uh, that budget should be finalized by mid-July, actually gets voted on final, final, um, about the middle of August in order to hit the state's deadlines. We will then, as a committee, we, it looks like we'll be reconvening in, in July, in June and July, to address the one agency that, that needs, needs some review. Other than that, we are scheduled by our calendar that you all have to reconvene in December and January to take the experience of this year's round and begin to build the recommendations for 2017. All that. Thank you all for coming. Any, anything else from the committee? Does anybody have any comments from the floor before we adjourn? Thank you all.